So I know it's been a while since I last uploaded. Basically, I've been having a lot of problems with my internet that have made editing really hard because sometimes manga panels and images would take minutes upon minutes to even load on screen. And then clip downloading would take like an hour sometimes to download like a four minute clip. So honestly, getting the material together to edit a video was nearly impossible. But I was active on Twitter, and you can follow me on Twitter in the description box down below. But something I did see being talked about on Twitter that really shocked me was that there is a conversation being had about the sexualization of the female characters in My Hero Academia, and I really just wanted to sit down and give my thoughts on that. The first thing that's important to establish is that the girls in My Hero Academia are around the ages of 14, 15, and 16. You could give or take a few years, as some of them were 14 or 15 when the series started, and have moved on to being 16 currently. An example is Momo. When Momo was introduced in the beginning of the manga, she was 15, but now she has moved on to being 16. Because this being a school story, time has to pass for them to progress in their classes. The fan service in My Hero Academia, in my opinion, is actually very tame, especially for a shonen. The only character that I could say is actually kind of a fan service character is Yanyurozu, because Yanyurozu needs to have her skin be bare and accessible easily to be able to create objects. You see this when she creates a sheet in the USJ arc, it destroys part of her shirt when it pops out of her body. It's just the nature of her quirk and one of its negative side effects. It's one of the things that people love about this series so much. Every single quirk has a realistic side effect. Since My Hero Academia is influenced by American comic books, I do think it's worth noting that the only reason many Marvel characters do not have this problem in the Marvel Universe is that Reed Richards discovered a material known as Unstable Molecules, and many superhero outfits in the Marvel Universe are made out of Unstable Molecules. Unstable Molecules are what the Fantastic Four's outfits are made of. That is why when the human torch sets itself on fire, his outfit doesn't burn. I believe it is also what Bruce Banner's pants are made of, and I believe the Spider-Man costume has been made of unstable molecules in the past, though I'm unsure of whether or not it is currently made of them. But to anybody who was interested, that is why characters in Marvel do not have this problem. It's also an interesting side effect to get Yanyurozu quirk. It's not something that affects her negatively in battle. She can just blast all her clothes off if she wants to. It's not going to get her killed. However, it is a minor inconvenience, and it is a great way of showing the inconveniences a quirk can cause a hero. Another thing I know people like to bring up during this discussion is the hot spring scene during the training camp part, but honestly, I don't see it. In the anime, it was like a split second. It barely lasted a second. And there was an above shot that didn't focus on their bodies at, like, all. It wasn't even really fan service, because the shot that we saw of them was very tame, and there wasn't really much in it. It was just a quick shot that lasted a couple seconds, so Mina could say a couple bits of dialogue to contribute to a comedic scene. There is the cheerleading bit from way back in the 4th festival arc, but that was more of one big gag once again. This is the thing, most of this is just played up for humor. What happened there was that the girls were actually tricked into doing it by Mineta and Kirushima, believing they were part of the 4th festival, and they were all willing to do whatever it took to pass. And in the first episode of season 3, which was a filler episode, or more technically it was a recap episode, the pool episode, the girls were dressed in very modest one pieces. Because the whole joke was that Minata and Kirushima wanted to use the pool as an excuse to maybe see some of the girls in bikinis, but they had to use the excuse of using it for training and a ton of the other male members of the class ended up tagging along. And then when they show up, they find out that the girls also got permission, but to use it for fun instead. It's all about the joke. They created this elaborate plan to try to see the girls in bikinis, but the girls show up in modest one pieces, and the girls were giving me okay to use the pool for fun. However, they, who got permission to use it for training, 
have to spend the rest of the day training during their summer vacation when they don't really want to train because they're lazy. The only girl drawn in a somewhat sexualized way is Nyanyurozu. However, Nyanyurozu also looks like she could be 18. So that's a little bit of an issue, but even then, as I stated earlier, she's not sexualized too much. He just wears somewhat revealing clothing as their hero uniform, but most of the time she's in her school uniform, which isn't revealing at all. None of the other girls' hero outfits are sexualized in any way. In fact, I never even considered the possibility until I saw other people talking about it. In fact, the only real opinion I've ever had about the girls' hero outfits is that I don't want to insult Beck girl, but I've always thought Ochako's outfit looked a little weird. Not weird in a sexualized way, but more weird weird in the fact that I don't think it looks very cool, and I think it looks kind of underwhelming, personally. But yeah, to be completely honest, overall, I don't have much more to say, because honestly, I don't think there's much of an issue here to talk about. I think anything with fan service in My Hero Academia, at least with the students, has always seemed to me to be entirely comedic. I just don't see the issue here. It never even occurred to me that the character in this show could be in any way sexualized, because I just don't see it. The only time there's anything that could be considered fan service, it's always in service of a joke, and it's never so far that it really bothers me. I think this is just people looking for something that isn't there. People have been mentioning that they think the characters are sexualized and there's a lot of fan service with underage girls and now people are seeing something that isn't there. Because I just don't see it. So yeah, do ask me, this isn't an issue at all. And I'm just gonna end the video with that. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Comment your thoughts on the matter in the comment section down below. I should be back on track to at least one upload a week. This whole thing with my internet kind of messed me up and I didn't upload for a while and I'm sorry about that. But my internet should be better now. But yeah, subscribe for more videos like this one. And above all else guys, have a great day.